Yep. A few weeks ago, a company called Cy Russia got in touch with me, an e-bike company, asking me if I would like to review their new Quattro. Now, over the last couple of years, I have had some review requests from e-bike companies, especially during the pandemic, but I've always declined. Partly because storage space for me is at an absolute premium, but also because I've always got plenty of material to work with and plenty of motorbikes to ride. But something about this bike sort of caught my attention, you know, the big chunky tyres and sort of motorcycle style appearance. And it is high time that I started to sort of check out some of these electric powered bikes because they're not going away, they're just rising in popularity. Now, full disclosure, they sent this bike to me free of charge. I don't have to return it, but I don't get any kickback from sales. They're not paying me any additional sums, and I've got absolutely no idea what I'm going to do with this bike when I've finished with it. Now, in the video description, you will find a link to this bike. There's also a discount code for £80 off a purchase of any Cyrusha e-bike that do have uh, quite a range to choose from. Now, it was my intention initially just to do a review on the bike, but when I started researching all this a couple of weeks ago, I realised that nobody was really doing videos explaining how to build one up out of the box. Probably because a build like this is a pain in the ass to film and they don't appear to come with any instructions. Now, it's not rocket science. This is basically just a big beefed up bicycle. And I'm sure just about everybody watching this has had to assemble a bicycle out of a box at some stage in their life. But I thought a build video might come in handy for some people. Or you might just find it interesting. The problem is the bike sort of arrived two weeks late. This is a brand new model to the UK. When I finally found out that it was coming this week, I reserved a day for filming the review, but then the bike turned up late from the couriers and there simply wasn't enough time to film a review. So I thought I would do the bike build today and then next Wednesday we'll get on with the review. This bike comes with a box of tools, but be warned, there aren't quite sufficient tools there to actually put the bike together. You will need an additional Allen key, an additional spanner, and a Phillips or PosiDrive screwdriver. I'll uh, show you the bits where they're required. Also, in the box, you'll find a pair of Welgo pedals and a box containing the charging equipment. There's also a foot pump included in the main box, which you're going to need to pump up those big beefy tires. There is already some air in them, but not enough. As I've said, there were no instructions with this bike, and just for your delight and amusement, I did get it wrong at one point. I'll explain that to you later on. And it wasn't until I actually completed the build that I realised what I'd done, but it wasn't a big deal. It was easy enough to sort out. I suppose a job like this would be easier with two people, although I did manage it reasonably well on my own. I would advise cutting the front of the box away from the main body of the box and dropping it down. That gives you a safe, soft surface to work on. That way, if you make a mistake and drop anything or the bike falls over while you're working on it, you're not going to cause any damage. It might just look like a beefy pedal cycle, but it is very heavy. I'm not quite sure of the weight, but rest assured I will get those details for the main review. The bike is very well protected and most of the foam pieces etc are held in place with cable ties which you're going to need to cut off so I'd advise a stout pair of scissors or a pocket knife to do that. Having said that, for safety's sake, just in case you do drop it, don't remove all the packaging straight away. Just remove the packaging as you need to for each sort of section of construction and then remove the remainder once the bike's been put together. Now obviously you don't need to do it my way, but I would advise that you leave the bike in the packaging initially while you cut the front wheel free from it. 
It's a really stout box and it provides a lot of support and I, I just decided that it would be better to get the wheel away from the bike and put it to one side before actually taking the bike out of the box. It just sort of serves as a second pair of hands to help you out. So the wheel's secured onto the frame of the bike via three cable ties with an additional cable tie holding the front mudguard onto the wheel because it's uh, not actually fastened in place at this point. It's just been secured in place with a cable tie for transport purposes. Obviously, whether you're using a knife or a pair of scissors, be very mindful of your paintwork and cut the cable ties away carefully. And once you've freed the wheel up, just put it to one side for later. You can then lift the body of the bike itself out of the uh, carton and place it onto that flap of cardboard ready to start assembling it. The front forks do have a plastic protector fitted on them and this also helps to sort of stabilise the bike so you can rest the bike on those front forks and it'll keep the bike reasonably stable while you fit the handlebars. This is where I got it wrong. Now the handlebar stem had been turned around 180 degrees, effectively facing backwards presumably to save storage space which enables them to make the boxes a couple of inches shorter. Now I personally am not familiar with this sort of stem, it's actually a handlebar clamp system which is very similar to that seen on motorcycles and it caught me off guard a little bit. It should actually have been turned back 180 degrees so that the clamp faced the front before I fitted it. So do that before attempting this part of the procedure. Now I'd put the camera away and it was getting dark before I realised what I'd done. So imagine if you will that these four allen screws are pointing towards the front of the bike not towards the seat as they actually are here. Now some of these allen screws do have that sort of permanent Loctite applied to them so they will feel pretty stiff. Overall I was very impressed with the quality of the components and the threads, there were no issues anywhere. Remove all four screws and then you can offer the handlebars up which are actually still attached to the bike by the cables. And once you've got the handlebars positioned correctly, you can place the clamp back over them and then replace the Allen screws. Tighten them up in a sort of star rotation sequence and make sure that the gaps between the clamps and the base part are all even. Don't over tighten them, there's not an awful lot of pressure required with these to actually hold the handlebar firmly in place. And don't forget, you are screwing steel into an alloy thread, so if you go on it too hard, you could strip it. And when you've finished, it should look something like this. And at this point, you should also tighten up the steering stem via these two screws using the same size Allen key. It's now time to fit the front wheel, the front mudguard and the bracket for the headlamp. So initially remove the front mudguard from the wheel and get rid of all the cable ties. And then remove the brake disc protector. Uh, that can be discarded, it's just a plastic protector to obviously protect the brake disc while everything is in transit. In your toolbox you will find a quick release clamp. It looks like an axle but it's not an axle, it's a clamp. Make sure that you've got that handy and then it's time to offer the wheel up to the front forks. Now before you do that you need to do two things. First of all remove that plastic fork protector. That's no longer required. Again it's just there for protection whilst in transit. Now the other thing that you need to remove is the spacer that's been placed in the brake caliper. That's there to ensure that the pistons don't close up while you're sort of putting the bike together because if you pull on the front brake that piston will close up and you won't be able to get your disc into place as you fit the wheel. So that needs to be removed. Again it can be discarded, it's no longer required. Just remember not to pull the front brake while you're fitting the front wheel now because it could cause you problems. You can then offer the wheel up and fit it into place. Now 
Now, the wheel itself has its own integral axle. So the front forks will sit quite happily and securely on top of that axle, but it needs to be secured in place. So take the quick release clamp out of your toolkit, remove the plastic domed nut from one end and just slide it into place. You can then put the domed nut back on the other end and tighten it up slightly. Now you don't need this to be too tight, otherwise you won't be able to engage your quick release clamp. It doesn't need to be fastened on too tight for your quick release clamp to work. If you find you can't engage your quick release clamp, it means that you've got it too tight, so just slacken it off a couple of turns until you can engage it securely. You should be able to engage it comfortably with just pressure from your thumb. If you find you're having to put your whole weight behind it, it's too tight and there is a danger of breaking something, so just slacken it off until you can engage it with just firm pressure using your thumb. And it's now time to fit your front mudguard and that headlamp bracket. Unfasten the nut and bolt that are already attached to the fork brace. Then take your wire headlamp bracket from the toolkit and sandwich that between the fork brace and the bracket on the front mudguard. And you will find that the Allen key and the spanner that are in the kit don't fit these. So you'll have to source that from your own tools. Fasten it up securely and you can then attach the actual headlamp. Now again, this is already attached to the bike via its wiring. So remove the nut and bolt from the bracket, put your headlamp in place and then replace the nut and bolt. Tighten them back up and there's just one more thing to do with the front mudguard before you've finished here. On the back of your fork legs near to the bottom there are two screws, one on each side. Remove those screws, then offer up the loop at the end of your mudguard stay up to the hull and replace the screw. It's important that you get them lined up correctly, otherwise it can be a little bit fiddly. And you will need a Posadrive screwdriver to tighten this up. Do that at both sides and your front mudguard is now secure. Nearly there now, we just need to put the pedals on and secure the rear rack. I was pleased to see that they've used some uh, decent quality aluminium Welgo pedals for these. There is a left and a right. Obviously the left hand side has a reverse thread. So it's important that you get them the right way around. Just screw them on and then with the spanner provided, tighten them up so that they don't come loose in use. Right, last job, and then you can finish off by just removing all the packaging. The rear rack is only a fastened on near to the axle. Once again, the necessary Allen screws are in place and need to be removed to facilitate fitting. So remove those first, keep them somewhere safe, and you can swing the rack over into position and line the holes up. Replace your Allen screws and then using the tool provided, tighten everything up on both sides. The saddle secures once again with a quick release lever, so adjust that to the position that you want it at and then secure it in place. And the bike is then pretty much ready to rock and roll. Make sure that all your fasteners are correctly tightened, but as I say, for the most part, you're screwing steel fasteners into aluminium, so don't over tighten them. The tyres need pumping up with the required pump to a pressure of 20 psi or 1.4 bar. The bike should come with some sort of residual charge, usually around about 50 or 60 percent. Enough charge just to take it for a quick test run and make sure that everything is as it should be, yeah, just to snag any problems. But obviously it is recommended that you fully recharge the battery before using the bike in earnest which will be the subject of the review on Wednesday. As I've said, I'll leave a link to Cyrush's website in the video description down below, along with an £80 discount code. Once again, thank you so much for watching this and my other videos and doing so helping to support this channel. I really do appreciate it. I would also appreciate it if you've enjoyed this video, if you would leave a like and perhaps consider subscribing to the channel. It does help me out when you do that. 
And if you do decide to subscribe, please hit the notification bell and ensure that your notifications are enabled. Whatever you're riding this weekend, please ride safely, and I'll see you soon.